Right now, drug companies all over the globe are racing to find new ways to fight the coronavirus, from treatments to soften the symptoms to an actual cure to potential vaccines. Which brings me to Sanofi, the French pharmaceutical titan. Last week, when we spoke to Regeneron, they mentioned a rheumatoid arthritis drug called Kevzara that they make in partnership with Sanofi. The two companies are studying this thing as a treatment for the worst symptom of COVID-19, the lung inflammation that causes a deadly form of pneumonia, and it might even block the virus altogether if you don't have it. Perhaps even more important, one of Sanofi's subsidiaries developed a vaccine for SARS back in the day, and they're now testing a variant against this novel coronavirus, which is a close cousin of SARS. Earlier today, we got a great privilege to speak with Paul Hudson. He's the new CEO of Sanofi. Take a look. People may not know your company. You're the foremost vaccine company in the world, which brings me to the topic of the day. How confident are you that we can ever get a vaccine against this scourge that is decimating the whole world? Oh, I'm confident that we'll get a vaccine. It may take a little while. I mean, estimates are between 12 and 18 months. But I can assure you for one of the leading companies like ourselves, we're doing everything we can to be there as fast as we can. Now, I know that you have a terrific partnership with Regeneron, have a big stake in it. I speak to Lance Leifert pretty much, uh, geez, every day. Why not? Uh, the thing that I'm most excited about is an older drug, is this Kevzara. Uh, and and this, the method that it is using, which is novel versus a novel coronavirus. How are things going with that trial? So we've started the trial. Of course, we have a, a very good relationship with Regeneron. Um, the medicine was brought forward because of some preliminary data elsewhere in the world. Um, we hope that we'll bring some relief to the patients in a more severe setting. We don't know. We're working with the WHO, with Regeneron, with the European Medicines, uh, Medicines Agency, and making sure that the right trials are done, but at the right speed, so that if there is a significant benefit, we can get it to patients as fast as possible. I'm glad you pointed that out. There's been some uh, reports about an old malaria drug that a lot of people have gotten behind, but the, the test is not necessarily uh, acceptable. I know it wouldn't be acceptable to a great vaccine company like yours. Can you explain the difference between what you're doing with Kevzara versus the uh, anecdotal evidence that the old malaria drug might have some play here? Well, look, let's, let's take a step back, right? So you asked about the vaccine. We've got two vaccines in play for COVID-19 different mechanisms, one a more established mechanism and one a more experimental mechanism. I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure we have two shots on the goal. It's important to get there as fast as possible in case, of course, there's a second wave. Then you've got the medicines that we're making every single day, the patients that need them just to continue in their chronic therapies, in asthma, in other diseases. The two medicines that are in the middle there, Kevzara and Plaquenil, which is a malaria drug, these are where people in China and other places have said, we've seen some effect. We have tried them and we can see some efficacy. Now, what we need to do is working with the WHO and the regulators is actually quantify that effect and quantify the actual patient profile that will respond best. We don't want patients struggling. We know that if repurposed medicines can be put to the task, to do something incredible, then so be it. So we're just playing our part, making sure they're available for the investigators, making sure the regulators have everything they need. But it does seem that uh, the, your acute drug that you just described, the acute vaccine, it seems like that if we're really lucky, uh, it can both take care of people who already have the virus in them and actually stop the virus coming in because of a very, uh, let's a brilliant way. It's a brilliant way to be able to head off the virus's uh, most insidious mechanisms. Yeah, you know, I think you know, ordinarily it takes 10 years to invent a vaccine. The main reason is because you're going to give it to a lot of healthy people on a massive scale. So you have to be sure and you have to be right. These are, of course, unprecedented times. So we're experts in this and we're moving as fast as we can. And the science is going to tell us whether we can be in patients that need vaccination, patients that will be protected, or even patients that may respond uh, who already have the illness. But we need a bit of time. And we're going, literally, I said, we've got everybody in the entire organization working 24 seven bringing their volunteer spirit to make sure we can do something with these vaccines. Right. And Paul, one of the things that has been uh, downright frightening to people in the medical community uh, is the fact that it turns out that many of the ingredients, uh, some people say most of the ingredients for drugs, 
uh, for the actual pills were made in India or China. Uh, there were 48 pill factories in Wuhan, in the uh, Yubei area, uh, that made it so that we were kind of, a, would say, hostage. You're doing something about it. This could be a major change in what we do for pharmaceuticals. Yeah, you know, it's an excellent point. And I tried to identify a large group of patients that needs the medicines they were getting long before this and long after it. You know, we make many of the, the ingredients for our medicines in France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and we want to do it right. And we noticed over the years that China and India were where most of those ingredients were coming from. Um, we, uh, we've stated a plan that we want to go out and create one of the biggest active pharmaceutical ingredient manufacturers in Europe. We want to do it in Europe. We want to help America and Europe to make sure that when we're in difficult uh, situations like this, we can continue to maintain supply. Let me tell you, you know, I visited our distribution center last week with the permission of the French government. I needed permission. And I went to see our medicines being put together and being shipped. And when I asked the site leader, I said, you know, uh, are you working Saturdays and Sundays to get these essential medicines to people? And they said, yes. And I said, do you have any trouble getting volunteers? He said, no. When I asked, twice the number of hands went up that we needed. There's a real spirit and a very purpose-driven mentality in all companies, I'm sure, but I feel it very evidently right now uh, in Sanofi. Now, uh, people should know that, that it's possible that you might be able to, that Americans might be able to participate in a spinoff of a company that I think sounds like a pretty great opportunity. Uh, in, in maybe a year, two years, can we see it as a, a publicly traded company? I think that's our plan. Our, our plan is to say, look, we want to do something in Europe uh, that could help Europe, the U.S. and beyond that is uh, high quality, that is guaranteed supply, and that others can participate in. It's bigger than just Sanofi, this. So we need to make sure that we bring it forward in the right way. Uh, and, and I think we have a plan to do that. So yeah, it's not too far away. And it's another good reason to look at how innovative we can be in Sanofi. You know, when we went back to our capital markets day in December, we laid out some prioritization. We said we wanted to win in vaccines because we knew it was important. Look where we are now. We said we wanted to win with Dupixin because it was incredibly important to drive uh, the mid to long term growth of the company. And we said we wanted to pull our pipeline through. When we step back, we say to ourselves, one of the things that we're doing that we don't need to be the best in the world at, but others can participate in too. Active pharmaceutical ingredient shared with other companies to build a big player to make sure patients who need medicines get them. You know, it's the very least we can do. And I think it could be a, a very sensible opportunity for investors. The last thing I want to mention, I'm glad you brought it up, Dupexin is a, it's a, a blockbuster. It's a huge drug. I want people to know that your company, uh, own, well, it's with Regeneron, but your company is just doing a great job of this. Just please tell people how many different varied uses there are of this wonder drug. Well, you know, I've been involved in a lot of medicines in my career, and I met patients and listened to patients and physicians in preparation for becoming chief executive here at Sanofi. I was blown away. There are very few medicines I've worked with that provide sort of life-changing efficacy for patients. We turn them to normal in many occasions, both in atopic dermatitis and in asthma, in uh, nasal polyposis, and many other indications to come, but really debilitating, life-constraining uh, illnesses. Uh, the profile of this medicine means that it's very safe to take also. So, you know, we get to a situation where we have an essential medicine growing at a rapid rate. Of course, we're there um, putting it forward, but the demand for it is incredible. And, you know, we've set forth an ambition, by the way, to be in excess of 10 billion euros, uh, you know, global sales in, in a peak year. We didn't do that just because of picking a number randomly. We did it because we know only 3% of the patients that really need it and that could have their lives transformed are actually getting it today. So we know there's a huge opportunity. It's an incredible medicine. And our partners, Regeneron, Len in particular, I must call out, a great partner. You know, we worked very well together to bring it to this point. There's so much more to give for the patients that need it. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. And I just congratulations for the, uh, the change in turn, the transformation that you're leading at a great drug company uh, and a terrific investment, by the way, too. That's Paul Hudson, CEO of Santa Fe, uh, who's doing so much to actually conquer this disease. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag MadTweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com 
or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.